What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Motorola Moto G Play 2023 tips and tricks and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of your device. Now the first thing I want to show you here with the Moto G Play 2023 is how to get a battery percentage in the upper corner. So by default, we do have the battery icon, however, it doesn't really give us a very accurate indication of how much battery is actually left in the phone itself. So thankfully, to get the battery percentage, all you have to do is pull down the shade, go to the gear icon, which will take us over to the settings. Then from there, go to search, and then type in battery, and wait a second, and you'll see right there, battery percentage. So we'll go there, and then there it is right there, and then we can enable it, and then now it doesn't matter where you are throughout the operating system, the battery percentage will always be in the upper right corner. So that's definitely very convenient and certainly something that I do recommend enabling here on the phone. Now heading back over to the battery settings area, we also have quite a few other options here that I do want to show you. So this one right here is battery saver. So if you find yourself in a situation where you think that you won't be able to get to a charger anytime soon, but your phone is also running low on battery, this will probably be very helpful to you. Or if you just know you have a long day ahead of you and you want to really conserve your battery, I can definitely see this being useful as well. So if you head over to battery saver in the battery menu here, you can set a schedule for it. And then also you can see by default, it is set to turn off once the phone is recharged above 90%. But essentially, once this is enabled, the phone will now turn off various background activities, and some other things as well, so that it doesn't use nearly as much battery. Now you'll still be able to use the phone, you'll get phone calls, text messages, your data will work, all of that, but some other background tasks will be eliminated here. You can also see that it does turn on dark theme as well. So certainly something that I do recommend enabling if you do find yourself not having access to be able to recharge the phone anytime soon. Now the next thing I wanna show you here is called optimized charging. So with any smartphone, your battery will degrade as time goes on. So essentially with this optimized charging option, you'll be able to further prolong the longevity of the battery in your device. So it kind of explains here how exactly that works. Essentially, once it charges up to 80%, the phone will then wait to charge to the final 20% until shortly after you unplug. You can see here that it says that your device learns your charging patterns and predicts how long it's usually plugged in. After establishing a pattern, it charges the battery to 80% and then it will wait to charge the final 20% until shortly before you unplug. And reducing the time spent charging over 80% puts less strain on the battery. So this is not enabled by default, as you can see. So you can enable that, and then now you will have optimized charging with your device. So I do recommend giving this a try, and if for some reason it seems to be a little bit annoying, then you can always turn it off. Now with the Motorola Moto G Play 2023, we do have the traditional three button Android navigation enabled here by default. Now that's kind of interesting because the predecessor model to this device actually gave us gesture based navigation as the default. So it seems like Motorola can't really decide which one they wanna do. It seems like from generation to generation, they're kind of changing that up. However, if you're not aware, with any Android device, you can switch between those two different modes of navigation. So I'll show you now how to go over to gesture-based navigation, as I feel like if you've never used that before, it is certainly something worth trying. Now to get to that, you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the gear icon, then from there go to search, type in nav, and let that load. And in a second here, you'll see system navigation, go there, and this is under the gestures menu, and after I show you this, there's a lot of other things I wanna show you here as well, but go here to system navigation, and you'll see that we do indeed have the three button navigation enabled by default. Now, if we switch over to gesture navigation, we will now lose those three buttons at the bottom. And instead we just have one line here. And essentially to go home, you swipe up, to go to your recent apps, you swipe partially up, and then to go back, you swipe from the side. So pretty straightforward and simple overall. Now, in addition to that, you can go to this gear icon to further customize it. You can customize the sensitivity, and if you want to activate the assistant, you can swipe up from a bottom corner. So we'll try that. And you can see there's the assistant right there. So pretty interesting. But this now leads us over to the gestures menu with all the various gestures, options, and features, and settings. And there's a lot of good stuff here. So definitely stay tuned as I show you. Now the first one here is swipe fingerprint for notifications. So on the back of the Moto G Play 2023, we do have a fingerprint sensor. But right now, if you swipe down on that fingerprint sensor like that, it does nothing. However, if you want to enable this, swipe fingerprint, you can see now with that enabled, by swiping down on the fingerprint sensor, it actually pulls down the shade here. So one swipe will take you to your notifications and a few toggles, and then you can do a second swipe to further pull down that shade. And then if you wanna pull it up, you can swipe up on that fingerprint sensor. 
So really cool. Now that's especially useful because this phone is very large. So if you wanna actually use the phone one-handed and you wanna swipe up from the top here, it can be pretty difficult. Now moving on, you can see this next one is double press power key. So right now, by default, it doesn't matter where you are throughout the operating system, if you double press on the power key, it does pull up the assistant. Now that's really useful overall, but there is another option. So if you go here, you'll see that you can actually have it launch the camera instead. And if you don't want it to launch anything, you can actually do none. But we'll do launch camera. And then now, it doesn't matter where I am throughout the operating system, if I double press on that power button, it'll pull up the camera. And in this situation, I haven't picked the default camera app, so you can see Snapchat is an option. But I'm gonna choose the regular camera there and do always. And then now, once again, by double pressing on the power button, it does pull up the camera right away. So that's very convenient. And I really wish Motorola would actually expand this feature to any app of our choosing. But unfortunately for now, it is limited to the assistant or the camera. Now this next feature is also very useful. It's called one-handed mode. So with the Moto G Play 2023, we have a very large 6.5 inch display. So it is very difficult, if not impossible, to reach all portions of that display with just one hand. So by going over to one-handed mode, so now that we're in the one-handed mode area here in the settings, there's a few things to consider. The first thing is if you wanna use the full one-handed mode, you do have to actually switch the phone over to gesture navigation. However, if you wanna enable the one-handed mode shortcut, you do get this little button down here in the corner and you can still keep the three button navigation and just tap on that button right there and it now pulls down the display for one-handed mode. So essentially, with one-handed mode, you can be anywhere throughout the operating system, you can be in an app, on a website, whatever, but if you wanna reach further up, you just tap right there and it moves the whole screen down. Another cool thing too is that you can actually have it show notifications instead. So if we switch over to that and then we do the one-handed mode shortcut button right here, it'll pull down the notification shade. So yet another option available. Now to pull the shade back up, you do have to actually swipe up like that, but that's really useful. And as for using the regular one-handed mode with the gesture navigation, I'll let you give that a try, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Now moving on, we also have attentive display. So essentially with this, it will prevent the screen from dimming or going into sleep while you're looking at the display. It is off by default, but if you want to enable that, then it is here for you. We also have flip for DND. So you can flip the phone over to enable do not disturb. So this is also not enabled by default. So once you enable that, Basically, if your phone is ringing and you want to silence it, all you have to do is just put the phone face flat on a surface, and then you might have heard it right there, it vibrated, and then it switched over to silent. And then if you want to take it out of Do Not Disturb, you just pick up the phone like normal, and then it now gets out of that mode, and it brings things back to how it was. And this one's really cool, media controls. So essentially, it'll use the volume keys to go to the next track or the previous track, and you can press and hold the volume up or down keys to accomplish this. So you can go ahead and enable that and give it a try, but essentially when your display's off, you'll be able to quickly do the media controls without having to actually open up an app. We also have fast flashlight. So this is on by default, and essentially if you do two chopping motions, it'll turn on the flashlight. So there we go. And doing that once again, turns off the flashlight. And then we also have swipe to split. So if you wanna see apps in split screen, you can swipe your finger back and forth. So we'll enable that. There we go. Good job, awesome. And then now I'm going to make sure that's enabled. Let's see here. Okay, allow. I'll give this a try here. And there we go, swipe to split worked very quickly. Now I can pick the secondary app. So I'll go with the, let's see, I'll go with the Moto app right here. And you can see it's now split equally. And then to get out of this, you can slide all the way either direction. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to take a screenshot with the Motorola Moto G Play 2023. And there's actually three different methods on how to take a screenshot that I wanna show you right now. Now the first method is to hold the volume down and power button for about a second. And you can see right there, it took the screenshot. Then from there, you can share it, edit it. You can also delete it or send it over to Google Lens. So I'll delete that. Now the second method is to go to your recent apps button, pull up the app that you want to screenshot, and then just tap on screenshot right there. And you get the same little screenshot in the corner. And then there's also a third way to do a screenshot. And it's actually back in this gestures menu. I skipped over it for a second and it's called three finger screenshot. So essentially touch the screen with three fingers to take a screenshot. So we'll try that out. There we go, just like that. Enable that. And then now, very quickly, I took a screenshot just using three fingers. Now the next thing I wanna show you are some various display settings. So we'll pull down the shade here 
and go to the settings. Then from there, we're gonna go down to display and there's a lot of good stuff here. First thing is we have screen time out. Now I did set this to 30 minutes for myself because I've been recording a lot of videos about this phone, but I believe the default is 30 seconds or a minute. So I definitely recommend trying different screen out times to see what best works for you. Then from there, you can see that we have dark theme. So you already saw that for a second when I put the phone into battery saver mode, but essentially you can use dark theme all the time if you prefer that. Maybe in a movie theater, for example, I can really see that coming in handy. Or if you want to, you can create a schedule for it as well. So maybe you only want it to be enabled in the evening. You can do that there. Then going back, we also have font size, display size. So if you want the font bigger or a different type of font, or I guess just the font size here that you can adjust, you can change that. There's also display size. So if you want to make your icons bigger, everything a little bit bigger or smaller, you can adjust that too. We also have some options for changing the colors. So if you want it to be a little more natural or more saturated or warmer or cooler, you can toggle that. And then there's also display refresh rate. So with this device, we actually get a 90 hertz refresh rate for the display compared to kind of what the standard is, which is 60 hertz. So that's a nice premium touch. So you can see by going here, it is set to auto. So it'll use AI to decide if it should use 60 or 90 hertz. But if you want to prolong your battery life a little bit more, you can have it set to just do 60 hertz all the time. So you might want to consider that if you find yourself kind of falling short when it comes to the battery with this device. Now the next thing I want to show you are a few keyboard customizations. So I'm a big fan of the default keyboard on this device. However, when you're in kind of the default mode here with the various letters and everything, you can see there is no dedicated number row. Now you can actually enable that. You can go to the gear icon and then from there go to preferences. And then from there, you can see number row. So enable that, go back. And then now we do have a dedicated number row. In addition to that, you can go back to those settings, go to theme, and you can change your keyboard theme. So if you wanna pick a color, you can do that. If you wanna pick a landscape, you can do that, gradients as well. So quite a few options here. So we'll try out blue as the color, apply that, go back here. And now you can see we have a blue keyboard. Another thing too, is that if you hold down on the home screen, it will pull up this menu and you can personalize, do wallpapers, widgets, and then also home settings. And then by going there, there's quite a few different options. You can adjust the home screen style. So if you don't want an app drawer, you can have all your apps just on the home screen. If you want to change the icon size, you can do that too. If you wanna make an adjustment to the app label, you can have two rows, one row, or just have no labels for your various apps. You can also allow the home screen to be rotated. So that's kind of interesting. We'll try that out right now. Let me check if Rotation is, there we go, enabled on the device. And then now I can rotate the entire home screen. So that's pretty cool. So definitely some cool customizations you can make through that home screen menu here. But this concludes my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Motorola Moto G Play 2023. I hope you enjoyed the video. And most importantly, I hope you learned something new today. But thanks again for watching. This is Kevin here. Definitely make sure to subscribe and like the video. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.